as Jao is actually here with us, uh, we can just start and discuss Coinbase. All right, yeah, absolutely. So let's move over. The COO of Bitflyer, Joel Egerton. Edgerton. I, I hopefully, I, hopefully, I said it the first uh, the first way right. So uh, let me bring him over, and he could tell us himself. Hey, how's it going, Joel? Hey, it's going good. It's going good. Hi, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today on such a short notice. Yeah, glad it's... to see you got your devices working on the phone at least. Yeah, uh, we're, we're pretty tight on security, so getting stuff to work sometimes is a pain. But... Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. So can, no, can, can you clarify uh, regarding your, your, your surname? Is it uh, Edgerton or Edgerton? Uh, Edgerton. 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 See, yeah, right. Okay. Mm. Again, thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to talk about Coinbase, all things Coinbase. So let me just recap real fast, right? So Coinbase is set to go public tomorrow. It will list uh, shares on the public stock market uh, through direct listing of the NASDAQ exchange. The ticker is COIN, and the opening price is expected to be around $400. Uh, but even though, uh, you know, we usually expect the the shares be available when the markets open specifically at 9 30 uh, EST AM EST it's not gonna it's not gonna be that way right because it is a direct listing and uh, uh, employees and other insiders have the option to sell their existing shares rather than the companies just issuing any stock so as it would have happened in a conventional initial public offering so um first of all Joel, mm. Coinbase IPO, is it a good thing or a bad thing for the industry? I think it's a great thing for the industry. Um, I think it shows a lot of the maturity in the industry. Um, and, and it brings, I think, a lot of uh, information about the company and about the industry to us. It, the way I look at it is, you know, if you, uh, I'm going to date myself and I'm going to look really old, but uh, if you look at like the AOL uh, IPO back in way, way back in 1992, right? That was kind mm -hmm. of a watershed moment for, for the internet. And I think Coinbase it, it, IPO is a similar kind of moment. Um, and I think it's also at a similar point in time. We are way early in the, the crypto market um, and there will be a lot more uh, information and a lot more fun to see. And can you tell us, uh, I, I should have asked that a little bit earlier, but can you tell us a little bit about what Bitflyer does? Sure, sure. So Bitflyer is um, a centralized cryptocurrency exchange. We are the largest crypto exchange in Japan with around, I guess, around 40% of the market share in Japan. Um, we're also licensed in the US and we're also licensed in Europe. So we're the only uh, centralized exchange that's licensed in all three of those locations. Uh, even Coinbase doesn't have that. Um, so in the U.S., we're available in about 48 different states, um, and we have kind of similar offerings to Coinbase. We have, you know, a retail arm and a professional arm for kind of institutional traders or active traders. Uh, so you've, you've mentioned that you are Japan-based in the first place, right? So how difficult it is for a crypto exchange to expand to the U.S.? Does it take a lot of compliance, for instance? Uh, yes, it takes a lot of compliance. <laughs> a lot of compliance, a lot of lawyers. Um, and in particular, you know, because we're a Japanese exchange, the, the laws in Japan are, are much tighter than the laws in the U.S. are much tougher oh, than wow. the laws in the U.S. Um, so we meet that standard. Uh, and then we come into the U.S. So we're very safe, very well established. Uh, and like I said, we, we very much... Uh, pride ourselves on, on being a safe place and being licensed. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So uh, John actually has uh, an idea because he has used Coinbase. I think it was your first ever exchange you've used, right? Yep. I used Coinbase and then I got uh, some Ripple, I think, from Shapeshift. So <laughs> rolled that up to $3 and then in the market. Do you, remember, do you remember what year that was? Because the company itself was founded in uh, 2012. Mm. Did you guys hear me? 2012. They've been around for a while. For a while. So do you remember Coinbase what year? Left. Yeah. I first signed up for Coinbase in 2017. Yeah, 2017. Early, 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 I actually just 2017. I actually just opened up a Coinbase account probably last week. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm new. I'm new. Okay. You're new. There's a lot of time. Joel, Joel, have you personally used Coinbase? Have you tried or seen or checked it? Yeah, I mean, I obviously check our competitors, so I, I look mm -hmm. at a lot of different um, ones. Uh, Coinbase is one of them, obviously. 
Right. So my, my question is the valuation, the current valuation is actually um, at around $100 billion, mm -hmm. right? I saw reports and there are, there are some reports available that this will actually be a 100, $140 billion IPO. Mm -hmm. um, before, before I get to some comments from analysts, mm -hmm. do you think it's a fair valuation? Is, is it the valuation that actually makes sense? Um, I think in the longer term, yeah. Um, if I remember correctly, the last thing I saw is basically a PE of around 90. So that's a really high PE. But, you know, considering the growth, I mean, we had them just recently come out in this most recent quarter saying they made as much money in the most recent quarter as they did the entire year before. Um, and crypto is a very scalable industry, right? Um, when the, their volatility in the market, you know, we can't suddenly just add machines or whatever. We, we have to be able to scale, uh, and the business model also scales. Um, so I think it is a, a reasonable valuation. Uh, and I think if you're a long-term investor, that type of, uh, company that has a, a solid business model, they're already profitable, uh, and can scale is something to definitely look into. Um, well, I have a market research from from the from a market research firm, New Construct, that believes, and I'm going to quote: the company has little to no chance of meeting the future profit expectations that are baked into this ridiculously high expected valuation of 100 billion dollars. Um, I think one yeah. interesting thing is it's like I mean a lot of this depends where the price of Bitcoin goes, right? Because mm -hmm. If Bitcoin ends up in six months at a half million dollars and people are paying a half a percent to run their transactions, like <laughs> these guys are just going to continue to mint money. Mm -hmm. So we'll see where this goes. Mm -hmm. um, I had w one quick question if you mind, Catherine. Um, so um, Coinbase is like has this wa uh, this wait list for staking Ethereum. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm curious, like I'm cu really curious how this plays out. Like when when more and more people. Uh, are able to stake their Ethereum on Coinbase, which is, you know, they have like $90 billion of customer assets or something. I'm not sure how much of that is Ethereum mm. versus Bitcoin, but that's a lot of Ethereum that could be staked mm. um, on an exchange like Coinbase. Mm. Um, do you, what are your thoughts on that, Joel? And do you, have, do you offer your customers the same type of uh, ability to stake their assets? Um, in Japan, we do, in the US, not. Um, so we're definitely looking to that space. But I think you bring up a good point, and probably something the, the analyst you quoted earlier doesn't quite get, is the, the business models are still evolving. So right now, if you look at Coinbase, that, you know, and the same for us, most of our money is coming from transactions, um, the fees on the transactions. Um, mm -hmm. And then you have other business models like a BlockFi, right, who makes money off of the spread on savings. So if you just do a, a, a simple savings product. So if you have a huge amount of assets under management and then you add in something like uh, a staking or, or a savings type of product, um, that unleashes a whole nother revenue stream that, that didn't exist before with very little change to your underlying business and your underlying cost. Right. That's why I'm saying that that scalability is definitely important when thinking about crypto companies. Well, I'm I'm just putting a, a link to our chat so Aaron could uh, put it on the screen. Uh, this is a Coinbase earnings report. Uh, uh -oh. I'm getting a 404. Oh my God! No way. <laughs> this is this is a, a earnings report for you. <laughs> okay, let me try one more time. Maybe hmm, here we go. What about oh, there now? It is. There it is. There it is. Okay. Okay. So we can just put it on the screen um, and take a look at what the company says. So I, I actually love the the line remote first company. <laughs> I know for a mm -hmm. fact that it's not true. They prefer people uh, working for them to be U.S. based. Mm -hmm. So so there's that. <laughs> verified users, they have a, a number of verified users of 56 million right now. Um, I mean, it, um, March um, up to March 31st, monthly mm. transaction users of 6.1 million mm. assets on, I'm sorry, John, you, you want to say something or no, no, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Assets, assets on platform of 223 billion representing 11.3% crypto asset market share. And while we're looking at it, I'd love to sort of add to that report um, that says 
the, according to, to the analyst of the report, they explained that the crypto market is still very young and mm. many more companies will compete with Coinbase in the future, which would cause Coinbase transaction margins to drop uh, in, you know, in a very big way. And uh, they sort of cite the so-called race to the zero that saw stock exchanges decrease their fees, noting that the crypto space is headed in the same direction uh, and which will probably cause com competitors to force Coinbase to cut its trading fees to stay competitive. Hmm. So um, yeah. can we comment a little bit on that? Uh, or do you, do you still think that the, the analysts might be wrong about that? I mean, I, I think they're, they're right. There is definitely going to be more price comp competition. Um, I think it's also important when they say that we're still early, right? If this was a baseball game, right, it's not first inning. It's not even, you know, when the national anthem's playing. The teams haven't even really arrived in the stadium yet. That's mm -hmm. where we are in, in crypto. Um, so there will be more competitors and there will be more price competition. I mean, even now, if you look at uh, uh, Coinbase Pro, right, when you come in, they're, they're charging, you know, half of 1%, right? So 50 basis points. We only charge 10 basis points right. uh, at Bitflyer, right? And, and we are profitable. Um, so I think, you know, the, the idea that there will be uh, a decrease in the fees is absolutely right. But if you look at the, the 6 million um, active trans, uh, transactions, active users, customers, um, there's 320 million people in the U S and there's only 6 million people that are active on their platform. You compare that to how many people that are active with banks, right? And that's who our competitor really is. It's banks. Mm -hmm. Um, that's a very tiny number that can get much larger. So the pie is going to get bigger and crypto will basically eat the banks. Okay. Uh, and, and then $400 per share. Is that a fair, uh, expected price right now, or do you see it going lower and or higher tomorrow? Yeah, I, I sent out a tweet earlier this morning about predicting prices for crypto. Um, I'm really bad about that. Um, so I think you know. we all are. Yeah, I think everybody is. You never know. Higher, higher long term. That's the easy analysts yeah. included. Yeah, I would say you know as far as like the, the, the price at the moment, right? <laughs> It's up to the market to tell us what the price is at the moment, but longer term, um, yeah, I think it's a long-term investment, um, and I think you know the company will grow. I mean, if you look at Apple in its early days compared to Apple today, it's grown a lot, and its market share has grown, and its profitability has grown. I think Coinbase is going to be the same kind of thing. I think the, the one thing with Coinbase, too, is they just like really nailed down the user experience. It's so easy to just get onto their platform, connect, and just buy by currency like they just they i mean there's other platforms that are good but i mean they just they definitely make it easy yeah uh, other than them crashing every time there's a you know there's a little right. shade to the community <laughs> yeah well, it depends, it's, i guess it depends when you're buying right like they make it easy for when that is not the problem but that is definitely yeah. a problem that they are going to be obviously a much more uh in the, like you know the stock price could easily be affected by that so that's something that they get you to avoid going forward for sure yeah, they're hopefully, definitely a pace setter in the industry, yes. And hopefully they are ready for for the amount of users and just people checking out their platform tomorrow and go, you know, right. going forward. So just just to recap, Coinbase is going to issue 114.9 million shares tomorrow. We will not know the price tomorrow, even though we really want to, we will not know it. It will it will only become available on Wednesday because it's direct listing in the first place. So I do have a couple of comments from the industry leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, they they are all pretty optimistic, but let me just uh, let me just look at them and read them real quick. So we have Harumi Utara Thompson, CIO at Celsius Network, the rewards earning crypto platform. Um, so and they say uh, an event like this brings attention to our industry, and I trust that and i trust that how the market is performing at the moment is no coincidence and i think actually to to the point that john brought earlier um and, and jowl as well so um we have seen reports on reddit that people are just logged out of their coinbase accounts or they cannot access uh their 
their assets. And it is actually isolated reports. We did not see like a huge flow of complaints like that. But I think this is something that Coinbase might be expecting in the next uh, couple of days. So again, I, I just hope that they are prepared for that. What else? We have Anthony Trenchev at Nexo, a lending institution in the digital finance industry. Um, and he says that Coinbase listen, um feels the same as uh, for crypto as Google's IPO was for the internet. 2021 is four hours space is the breakthrough year that 2004 was for Silicon Valley's tech companies. It's actually a pretty great point. <laughs> Just over 15 years on, it's hard to imagine life pre Google. The coin listing sets a precedent and a benchmark for the rest of the cryptocurrency industry. It lays the groundwork for financial reporting for the native companies. One, that does justice to the technology of transactions on the blockchain mm -hmm. and the seasonality of the market that can make or break a company. I have not actually seen a negative uh, comment on uh, Coinbase IPO, except just Bitcoin maximalists or cryptocurrency industry maximalists that are saying that Coinbase is not going to be a specifically crypto cryptocurrency company anymore because mm. it's not the philosophy. Mm. A crypto company could not go public. Do we have anything to say about that? I mean, I, I wouldn't totally agree with that, right? I mean, uh, one right, of the wouldn't, things... Wouldn't or would? Um, I, I think it's perfectly okay for a crypto company to, to go public. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the idea, I think, is, uh, you know, there, there's a very strong kind of libertarian streak in the crypto industry um, and that that individualism that you want to bank yourself and everything like that. That, that is definitely almost a, a religion within the, the crypto industry. Um, mm -hmm. But I think we need to look at the bigger picture underlying like Bitcoin is blockchain and blockchain right. as a technology is something that can rewire the entire financial industry. Um, it is a massive, massive uh, change industry where there could be huge efficiencies um, from that underlying blockchain technology. That's why I keep on saying, you know, our, our competition is not with each other in the crypto industry. Our competition is the banking system um, and rewiring that banking system so it's fairer for individuals. You know, I want my money to work for me. I don't want it to work for the banks, right? That is the right. ethics of the, the crypto industry. So having uh, a company like Coinbase or any other crypto company have an IPO. So they have more resources in order to go out and, and accelerate this change, I think is a good thing for the industry. Uh, and are you considering Absolutely. going public uh, in the US or Japan or maybe Canada? Because Canada seems like a good place for, for crypto companies to go public based uh, on the experience. Yeah, when can we see that BitFlyer IPO? Yeah, no comment. <laughs> uh, okay we great, had answer, great answer uh, yeah great answer uh and then uh aaron uh if we if we have any questions from the chat let us know while i i do have another question what yeah we have a we have about another minute or so so uh okay. let me see if i can find one one question okay so um but in in all fairness uh is the U.S. the best company to go public for a crypto company, Give, given the compliance, the, you know, regulatory framework, the SEC? What would be the best company to for for a crypto company to go? Sorry, the best country for a crypto company to go public? Ooh, that's a tough question. Um, it is. <laughs> I, I, I don't know is the answer. I think it, it's perfectly fine for like a U.S. company. I, I think. There is concerns, and, and you see that within the filings uh, of Coinbase about the regulatory uncertainty in the U.S. Um, while, you know, like in our home market of Japan, it's much more certain. The law is quite clear um, for crypto companies. So that type of risk and uncertainty is much lower in Japan. But the U.S. is a much larger market. Um, there's a lot more discussion about it in the U.S. If you're trying to go for an IPO right now, you'll probably get a higher price in, in the U.S., um, so from that perspective, I think, uh, the U S is, is a great place to do from a regulatory perspective and a risk perspective, you know, some place like Japan, that's kind of already clear, or maybe even like a Singapore or, or maybe a little bit better for that case. Singapore, Gibraltar might be also the place and Malta was supposed to be the blockchain Island, but we yeah. haven't heard a lot, <laughs> heard a lot yeah. from Malta in a while. I think they changed their mind. Yeah. Aaron, do you have uh, any questions before we, uh, uh, nothing that the mods haven't handled already. So, 
All okay, good. then. So tomorrow, NASDAQ, <laughs> ticker COIN as in C-O-I-N, mm. Coinbase is going public. This is a huge event for the crypto industry. Uh, tune in tomorrow for our show. We're gonna, I think we're going to talk about you know, Coinbase IPO all day. <laughs> all day. It'll be the talk of the day for sure. Yeah, it'll be the talk of the day. Joel, thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you for, for, you know, for sharing your experience with us. And good luck with uh, expanding in the U.S. and any other country. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. We'll definitely be looking forward to growing here. Yep. Thank cool. you so much. Thanks, Joel. Have Thank a good you. one. Bye-bye. Have a good one.